I think I'll start off this. Everybody, hi, my name is Stevie Freeman Montez, Sustainability Manager at the City of Sarasota, and I'm joined on the call with my counterpart at the county, Lee Hayes Byron, who will um, talk a little bit at the end about data. And I just want to first say thank you so much for inviting us to talk at the workshop because um, I feel like we've reached a milestone here at Sarasota to be presenting on the East Coast. It feels great to be included. And um, just thank you. Thank you. And her, I've learned a lot already from the presentation. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about our Ready for 100 um, effort. The city, our city commission this past summer in 2017 did commit to 100% renewable energy by 2045. And that was community-wide. They also committed in that same resolution to a municipal um, operations goal of 100% renewable energy by 2030 and a shorter term goal for our municipal operations of 100% renewable energy by 2024, I'm not 100%, 50% for our municipal buildings by 2024. So that one especially is, is really quite soon. Um, and so there was a lot of community, just energy and, um, and activism that showed up at our city commission chambers and we had a great presentation and debate and dialogue um, and the commission unanimously approved this commitment and kind of gave the directive to go figure it out, you know, go go see how, how we can do this and how feasible it is in more detail um, and what strategies we should pursue. So the city did begin a planning process. Um, and I should also mention, um, just let me know, Jason, just interrupt me if my screen is showing in any way and then I'll, I, I'll I will, I will as soon as it is, is, is up. Okay, no, no worries, I'll keep going, but um, if it does, just let me know. So we do have um, four, four guiding principles that I think are really important that guide how we look at the Ready for 100 um, effort. The first is to promote energy efficiency and conservation, reducing energy and strategies that are around energy conservation and efficiency first, and then renewable energy. So we are definitely, I'm trying to focus on energy conservation. We also have a guiding principle around social equity and how we can focus strategies to help those most in need and also to be inclusive um, and address historical um, communities that have been disenfranchised. And we call those out very specifically to communities of color, the elderly, um, new Americans, and, and we kind of list, list out the populations that we um, uh, want to make sure we're especially inclusive to and in implementing strategies around and prioritizing those strategies that have those um, benefits for those communities. And we also um, are looking at a guiding principle within our strategy of uh, our strategies, we're evaluating those that have local job creation or economic development potential as being something we also want to prioritize and evaluate strongly. Um, so the, the way we're doing our planning process, we kicked off a, a community meeting in December and we're having community meetings every other month where we bring large groups together and we talk about how we can do 100% um, renewable energy transition. And then on the off months, I'm spending going to targeted um, communities that are already meeting that might not feel comfortable or that might not be able to attend the larger the larger workshops. And so we're kind of doing targeted outreach on the off months to make sure we're being um, as inclusive as we can. And the very first meeting in December is where we, we listed off a lot of um, state related policies and utility policies that were related to 100% renewable energy. So we, we wanted the community and all the people that were there at the workshop to really understand um, what state level policies influenced what strategies were even available to us. And so we, we presented a lot of data on how much renewable energy we currently have in our system. Um, and also those state level policies and local policies and utility policies. And then um, on February 21st, we'll, upcoming will be our second workshop, community workshop, and we plan to evaluate strategies that were identified at that first meeting. So what we did at the first meeting is we had kind of big post-it notes around the room and we, we told people, give us ideas of how you think we, should trans we could transition to 100% renewable energy. And we have those kind of put into different buckets of community strategies, um, utility scale strategies, municipal operation strategies, and then we had a wish list of, yeah, we, we can't do it now due to um, state policies or utility policies, but we wish we could. So we had kind of a wish list um, as well. So on the second meeting in February, we'll evaluate those strategies based on social equity criteria and local ec economic job development. Um, 
criteria. And essentially we hope to get a bunch of feedback and conversation on um, criteria for especially those community strategies that we identify. And then we hope to prioritize those at a meeting in April. And if you could see my screen, you kind of see this whole process laid mm -hmm. out, but. You're, you're, up, you're yeah. up now. Yay, okay, great. Um, so on the April 18th meeting, you can see that's where we, we plan to prioritize strategies. Um, and then essentially at the very last meeting, we will talk about um, we'll talk about how we can create an implementation plan of actually assigning tasks and identify, identifying um, who, who the leads are and, and ultimately presenting a plan to city commission. So I just kind of show this is a long-term planning process um, that we are trying, we're kind of in the middle of and figuring out a little bit as we go. Um, let me see if I can advance here. Um, some of the challenges that we have run into with the Ready for 100 is that we had a great show up for um, the commitment to 100% renewable energy, but we did feel a little unprepared for some of the data and analysis that needed to go with the decision of how to get there. And so we, um, it's great because it's given us focus as a staff and as an organization for, um, for our work and sustainability and how we can focus on the Ready for 100 initiative. And our commission was supportive of that, but it, it is a little um, overwhelming the amount of data and analysis that I wanna make sure we're picking strategies that are the most impactful. Um, and a lot of that would take a good amount of analysis but we don't necessarily have all the funding or the time. We have a lot of grassroots support that wants to, to get moving on this. So that's also why I mentioned out the, the challenge associated with kind of balancing that planning and planning well and making sure we're doing strategies that have the most impact, but also moving forward and, and doing um, kind of high visibility and showing progress. And so that's been a bit of a challenge as well. Um, I'm sorry to interrupt. I, I accidentally grabbed the control back. So I, I think I'm trying to give you back presenter control. Oh, okay. Let me see if I click this here. Did that help? Yes. Thank yes. You. Sure. So th this is just a screen that's listing out the um, the challenges. We are with um, also Florida Power and Light. They were present at our kickoff meeting. They've been, you know, we're hoping to kind of build more relationships. They were also um, kind of helping facilitate those utility scale strategies, or they were there, I should say, at the station and receiving the public input and ha were part of the conversation at the first uh, meeting. But um, that's been one of the challenges of how with the FPL, how best to coordinate and what, what ways are available to us. Um, so that's, that's all I was gonna talk about regarding the Ready for 100 planning process. I just wanted to briefly mention that for the municipal operations, um, one thing that we're just trying to get out of the gate really quickly to show progress is that we're doing a very detailed uh, analysis for solar, especially for rooftop, but some ground mounted as well, where we're trying to ultimately develop a budget idea over time um, based on our rooftop potentials and lifespans that we can say, okay, um, city commission, you know, you've, we've adopted this goal. Here's how much money we would need each year if we wanted to um, do a certain amount of installations over time. And so the scale of the cost of those installations and investments weren't quite clear yet, but we're trying to get better numbers. And um, that solar feasibility assessment should be, you know, we're getting quotes um, starting probably next week uh, to, to move that work forward. And I, I'm really excited to see what those numbers come back towards. Um, and I, for, I think this is where I'm gonna pass it off to, to Lee Hayes yeah. to talk a little bit about our collaborations. Okay, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yes, yes? okay. Um, so I'm Lee Hayes Byron, I'm the Sustainability Manager at Thursday County, and um, thanks Stevie for taking the lead with the Ready for 100 efforts. Our county has not adopted that, but we do work together on um, helping to make it work for the city, but also in some other strategies, which is what I'm gonna talk about here. So um, CB uh, organized a solar permitting roundtable, which w brought together um, Sarasota County and our uh, four cities all, all to came together to talk about our permitting processes for solar and identify opportunities for streamlining. We talked about fees, review times, uh, zoning restrictions, inspections. Um, Sarasota County already had over-the-counter permitting, which was possible online immediately. So like was talked about earlier, we already have that instantaneous um, resident, residential permitting opportunity. So we were able to share that with the other jurisdictions in the room. And I hope it's okay to say, Stevie, that the city has adopted that 
since that uh, roundtable, yes. which is really exciting. Yes, okay, that was um, a huge, huge milestone after um, that roundtable, yep. Yeah. Yeah, and we think that the other cities are, are talking about it and, and looking into what's possible. Um, the next bit is about solar education. Um, we at the county do education classes on all kinds of things. And um, in 2017, we did outreach on solar specifically at nine events reaching over 350 people. So we specifically have solar classes with a lot of interest from people and, and we continue to, to educate broadly on that across all the jurisdictions. And then PACE was talked about earlier and the county, Sarasota County is developing a program which is designed for opt-in by the city. So we're gonna sort of take the lead and allow the cities to, to be a part of our program if they choose to do so. And then the next one, Stevie. Yeah, thank you. Um, so Stevie mentioned that data was a challenge in her Ready for 100 stuff, and and for us even before that, it was it was a challenge. So I wanted to share what we have been trying to track, and then the next slide will be about what the results have been. So um, where do we get our data from? Uh, because Broward is also FPL, we, I specifically put in here what we what we get from FPL in various ways. Um, we Every year we ask SPL for the following things. We ask them for countywide electricity consumption data um, and number of customers, and they give it to us by month and by sector. So it's not broken down by city, it's not um, by customer, it's, it's really high level, but at least it gives us by sector and by month, and we add it up. Um, and then uh, we also ask them separately for the number of solar interconnection numbers per year. Um, and uh, we also find, usually, but sometimes ask, their uh, grid sources percentages. So that tells us how much of their grid uh, production is from solar. And the most recent one I've found is in this slide, which shows 0.4%. So then um, we also asked them for more detail on their interconnections, and they pointed us to a PSC report that's available online. Um, and we then were able to manipulate that with some help from a local solar contractor. And that gave us the specific um, line items of the interconnections, not by address, but by county. So they're anonymous interconnections in our county, which is great. And that told us more than just the number of interconnections. It was the, the um, size, capacity, and that kind of thing as well. Um, and then we just determined, um, as sort of a light bulb moment, we felt sort of silly, but um, we also realized that they give us reports on our franchise fees. And so those are also opportunities for checking the numbers they give us, finding other um, information on the energy uses by, by jurisdiction. And then lastly, in the past, we had done some compilation of solar permit data that was really hard to do. And, and I think going forward, we're only gonna do that as a last resort. Uh, the last point on this slide is that all of those things vary by whether they're available by city versus county. In some cases, the cities have to sort of extrapolate based on percentages and that kind of thing. All right, and then the last slide, thanks, um, is what do we do with all that? So we've tried to identify these community metrics that we're gonna track going forward. We have information on electricity use, total and average per customer by sector, and we've been doing that since a baseline of 2005. Um, and then, like I said, we do the number of solar interconnections, the trend over time is that graph on the top. Um, and then more new information that we have is on system sizes, distributed capacity, and that helps us understand, um, compared to that 0.4%, of uh, grid solar, what is actually the percentage given by the distributed solar on, on rooftops. So that's that last bit. We're trying to calculate really what does that mean in terms of a total percentage of electricity used locally. And um, Stevie and Jeff worked hard to get us to this 0.6% graph on the right. Um, there's a lot of math behind that and it was really interesting to try to, to piece all that together. So we're gonna try to track that going forward using those various data sources that we showed on the last slide. And I think that's it for us. Awesome. Thank you both so much. If you're able to stick around.
Bye, everyone.